How's it going YouTube? Welcome back to another video on the channel and today I wanted to take you through a journey of all of my in paper decks since I started playing um, till today. There's about like I think 10 maybe 12 decks. Uh, I just want to show off the you know show off the cardboard tell the story behind the deck why I picked it up and like you know this is this is my Yu-Gi-Oh journey basically from the beginning to today uh, where I'm at. So uh, yeah, I hope you do enjoy this. Uh, if you did, leave a thumbs up in the video, subscribe if you're new as always, and uh, let's kick this off. If you want 5% off any single or sealed product and want to support me and the channel, head over to tierzerogames.com and use code GALZO5 at checkout. So I have a, all of my deck boxes here next to me. Uh, everything is, uh, you know, the Ultra Pro Black and everything, of course, if you've seen some of my videos, you know that Everything is labeled. Um, before that, I usually printed out the labels. Now I have like a small, uh, cool label maker that I can type on my phone and it prints it out and it's a, a sticker immediately. And the first deck that I want to show off is actually Altergeist. Altergeist was my first deck ever. Um, you're going to see a lot of the cards like on screen, like uh, nice, beautiful shots. I started playing in paper Yu-Gi-Oh, I suppose, around two years ago. And I picked up Altergeist because I downloaded, I bought a Nintendo Switch when I was in the States for, for a business trip. I got back and I was like, you know, it was beginning of COVID. Everybody, you know, came back to Yu-Gi-Oh! And I decided to go ahead and play some uh, Link Evolution on the Switch. I missed Yu-Gi-Oh! I played it lastly. Um, the last I played it was, I think was 15 years ago before that, uh, when I was just like a teenager. And I... Picked up Link Evolution, started playing it, and one of the best decks there was actually Altergeist. And I looked around at YouTube a little bit, found Doug Zeef, DZ, if you guys probably know him. He was like a renowned Altergeist player, his channel was like all around Altergeist. I, I liked what the deck did, it was easy to pick up in the beginning, and I think that this is kind of what drew me into starting to play. So, it was really fun, I picked up a core off of eBay. Of like a pretty you know high rarity core of altar guys everything is like hollowed out um secret rare multi fakers i was like loving it and link evolution actually had one multi faker so it was a pretty big jump up i had a lot of fun with it all of the i think probably like for six months i i only played altar guys in locals until i picked up another deck then pukeri came out i kind of like peeked back into the deck we had uh, imperial order legal for a time with the deck so it was really really fun and this was my first deck so i'm i'm never gonna sell those cards or like you know get rid of them in some way they're really cheap and alter guess is not good anymore but um it's really really fun then the second deck that i played was actually sky striker i think that sky striker i'm not even really sure what drew me into sky striker i remember i played um you know i started getting to know my local community, starting to make friends at locals. I remember one day, it was the ban list that actually released Engage to one from being banned. And I saw that and I was a little bit more into Yu-Gi-Oh! during that time. And I said, well, let's pick up a uh, Sky Striker deck. I saw somebody on my locals uh, group uh, post a, a deck for sale, like an entire deck with everything. You know, everything hollowed out, secret rare, high rarity. Um, and I said, let's give it a, a shot. This looks like a cool deck. And I, I'm really happy I made that decision. I picked up the, the Sky Striker deck. Then, you know, DPE came out, stuff like that. Um, Adventure. Sky Striker was solid for a while. For a locals level, it was really fun. You know, with access code, all the link summoning. Um, in a locals environment, it was really, really solid as a deck and a lot of shiny cardboard a lot like everything's like secret rare you know it gave me an excuse to get uh reinforcements of the army secret rare which is really really good looking and like the entire extra deck you know rose came as a secret after i started playing ray is now an ulti but i keep my secret and now we have linkage so i always i also picked up linkage my deck still has the mystic minds in it because i haven't played it since but um striker was my my second deck ever and uh, I think I'm, uh, it always has a soft spot. It's such a cool deck. It's so iconic. And I really love all the cards in it. It's like super shiny as well. I love Sky Strikers. And then after Sky Strikers, 
I actually picked up Branded. Um, Despia, when the structure that came out, I picked up Alubirds, Ecclesias, all the decor from Dawn of Majesty. But we're going to get to that at the end because you know already all about my Branded deck. So we're going to show it in the end. Then I started getting really seriously into like competitive Yu Gi Oh! collecting, you know, YouTube, everything like that. So this is going to be a speed run of all the decks that I picked up. Also, I picked up Runic and Sprite when they came out. Already saw those decks. I had a Barom that I had in some of the decks. Already sold that for the three ultimate rare Albaz. So those aren't going to be in the video, but uh, a few of the cooler decks that I picked up. So first of all, this was Melfi. And Melfi, I picked this around the time I started playing Sprite. You know, there is some synergy there. It's pretty cool. Um, but I also picked it up, one, because of the Rescue Cats that I wanted for my Tri-Brigade deck that is also in this video. And two, I picked this up as a birthday gift for my girlfriend. So I uh, I didn't think she would get into Yu-Gi-Oh, to be honest. I knew that she wouldn't like the, you know, the competitive aspect of the game, but I still wanted to have, it was sort of like a gift for me and for her at the same time. Uh, so I picked up the deck, it was super cheap. It's super cute and it was really, really fun playing it with like things like sprites um, and and all of that. Like the deck is, is like solid and fun on, on a locals level. So. Um, this was uh, Melfi's. It was super cute and fun. And after that, I picked up another deck that I kind of was like messing around with, and it was Crusadia. So we built this. Um, Crusadia hasn't been like meta in, in forever, but we built this variant that had like Arborea with Halki Fibrex, Shooting Riser, Make Baron, you know, um, make like, you know, Scythoc basically with Crusadia. It was super funny, played like Sangan, picked up Sangans for the first time since I was a kid. Um, and Crusadia, I always really, really liked the artwork. Um, the core was also like high rarity, I traded it for like a bunch of stuff. Then I actually picked up Scareclaw. It was when Dimension Force came out. And honestly, I don't think anybody was actually looking at Scareclaw as something competitive. I kind of liked the, you know, I played it around when it was like OCG only. Um, and it was really, really fun to play. I really like like the, you know, going for like the big OTK. The cards were really cool. The lore, uh, it was just like, like the beginning of the lore before Tier Elements even came out. Um, it gave me an excuse to play a lot of really cool um, strategies. And it was really fun. I actually pulled three Visa Starfrost when I was opening Dimension Force on my channel. I was open, I opened like three box or something, pulled three Visas. Then I was like, okay, this is a sign. I need to pick up the core. I did it. And I'm really happy I did because I got to use it a few times. Then I picked up Adventure and stuff, put it in the deck. You know, Visas is really hyped up right now. And Scareclaw actually tops events even here and internationally as well. So it was a really cool pickup. Then afterwards, I picked up a small Tri Brigade core. Uh, I had most of the, the extra deck, but um, I really wanted Tri Brigade. I have a friend. Uh, who I play with in my testing group, and he's a really good friend of mine, and and uh, he plays Tri Brigade like forever. He always kicks my ass when I'm playing Despia, so I was like, let's pick up the core. A lot of the things got reprinted, but I wanted like a you know the kit was is now a secret. It's really really beautiful and shiny. Um, the links got reprinted in the tins last year. It was really cool, so I picked up the deck. Afterwards, Crystal Revenge came out, picked that as well, and then of course Tear Laments and Ishizu. So it was the, the first wave of tier elements for me was danger tier elements, you know, the build with the dangers, Dark Refer, Goki Paul, Fairy Tale Snow, you know, it was a really fun explosive deck that eventually like, you know, Curious got banned, Snow got banned, everything like that. So that was the first wave I picked up like the dangers and stuff. It was really, really fun. Then of course I picked up tier elements, Shizu, all the cards to have, but the, the the thing that I never had was the field spell because when we ordered the, the pre-release um, sale from tierzerogames.com, hop over to there, use code galzo, code galzo5 at checkout if you want 5% off, by the way. We bought it from Tier Zero. Everything was like super cheap in Tier Zero in pre-sales. Usually it's like way below market price, but we sort of like make it, made a choice to pick up a Sprite Core and not a Tea Elements Core, which we now like all of us regretted immediately. And I, I didn't have the, the, the guts to, to get the field spells because it was such a commitment, but now it's gonna be a little bit cheaper. So maybe I'll, uh, you know, 
buy that, pick that up uh, sometime soon. Then after Shizu came out, I was like, let's pick up some Notoria cards. So I had a lot of Notoria cards laying around. Like the deck was, um, a lot of the support is new and it's all like commons. Uh, the Cricket, um, the, what's her name? Um, the, the Flower Girl, Camellia. Then also I picked up like a few Vernaself cards and it's really good. Shout out to Evil East for playing this deck um, always in locals. And uh, she, she makes the deck look really fun with like a Fenrir. It's like an earth deck. And I picked up the core as well. Really shiny and nice and also pretty cheap. I had a lot of it like lying around. So I put like a few cards together and made that deck. And uh, I actually borrowed it. I never played it in, in locals or anything like that. But I lent it to a friend once. We took it to, to a regional or some event. Um, and he had fun with it. So, before we end the video, one less deck that I have is actually Kostura. So, I'm gonna play Kostura during the next format. I'm also gonna play Branded, but I think for national season, probably it's gonna be Kostura for me, just to make, you know, to top nationals, like I did last year with Branded. So, I really want to continue on that train, top another nationals. It's definitely doable, and I do want to play a meta deck. So, Branded... Last time, the format was like really wide, but Branded was um, a very good deck to play in that format. Now I think Kostura is going to be it. So Kostura Core that I picked up on pre-sale on TierZeroGames.com. Um, and then an Adventure Core I also picked up recently for a pretty good price. It sort of tanked afterwards and now it's picking up again. So, um, you know, Ultimate Rare Enchantresses. Diablos is the mind hacker that I had from when I opened um, uh, Brothers of Legend. So... All of that, sort of like for months, we've been preparing and buying the cards way, way ahead just to make sure we don't have to pay like so much money when it's actually, you know, meta and hyped. And lastly, of course, you all know it, it's my branded deck. And um, this is like, you know, my baby. I've been, you know, since April, I've been making so many changes for this deck. I changed sleeves so much because I played with it in so many like on so many occasions i i grinded this deck to death and like the sleeves were like gone and it's really really funny that um you know i still have it i still enjoy it it's still a good deck in my opinion i topped nationals with it i played so many events with it locals regionals stuff like that and i always really really enjoyed it and um it's still evolving i picked up a few starlights ultimate rares Pimping out the deck as much as I can right now. And I truly, truly love this deck. This deck has been so much fun to me. And honestly, it, it got me through, you know, hard period and times in life. Um, and, and you know, the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, I'm sure a lot of people can relate to it, really helps like on the social side, you know, when you have a community to get you out of like a dark place or give you some, you know, something fun to do. Um, but Branded has been there for me always. And this channel is like, you know, especially about Branded, I really like the deck and the lore and like all the cards that are my babies. So there's nothing that can replace what I what I feel for this deck. So, um, of course, we end on Branded, which is my favorite deck in paper currently. So this was a bit of a different video. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, leave a thumbs up on the video and subscribe if you are new. As always, if you want to support the channel further, uh, click the join button below to learn how to become a member and earn some cool perks. Thank you so much for watching as always. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.